open interchange of multiple buyers, suppliers, and funders around the world has brought supply chain finance to the next level. Today, organizations can effectively optimize their working capital from within their financial supply chain by improving cash flow, reducing credit risk exposure, and enhancing visibility of invoices and payments. Greetings, everyone. It's Friday, May 30th, 2014, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. The Tech Talk turns to optimizing your financial supply chain and how enterprises can involve their strategic trading partners to create tangible value for their entire value chain. Up to the topic, we Tech Talk with Vice President of Business Development, Dan Giuliano of Prime Revenue. Dan is responsible for identifying and developing global strategic partners for the company. He has also been a member of the team involved in the design and, and development of Prime Revenue's open SCITM suite of products and services, products and services that offer a comprehensive portfolio of working capital and cash flow optimization solutions. Prime Revenue is a recognized leader in supply chain finance and known for its deeply rooted forward thinking and entrepreneurial spirit, all reflected in its leadership team. The Tech Talk turns to supply chain financing, managing, and optimizing cash flows as we speak with TAG Top 40 Most Innovative Company, Vice President of Business Development for Prime Revenue, Dan Giuliano. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Dan, welcome to Tech Talk. Thanks for having me. I've got a feeling we're going to have some strong ears to the radio program today because I don't think there's a company out there that isn't concerned about working capital and cash flow optimization. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, prime, prime Revenue and maybe start off with a little bit of its background. Sure. Uh, prime Revenue is a 10-year-old, uh, actually an 11-year-old company, um, headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we are focusing on, as you stated, working capital solutions and really helping companies with their working capital objectives. Um, we have about uh, 14,000 companies now around mm. the world wow. to leverage our technology today to help with their working capital needs. Um, you know, we have offices in Atlanta, as I mentioned. We also have offices in Prague and and also uh, Hong Kong to really follow the sun support for companies that have working capital needs and suppliers all over the world, and we can really help with those rollouts and initiatives. So you not only deal with uh, the cultural aspects in terms of uh, uh, a country's culture, but the industry's vertical cultures as well. So the, is there uh, any major differences in any of those uh, as far as capital is concerned, or is money money? Well, money is money. There are some legal and, and challenges and, uh, with you dealing with when you're buying receivables or doing around work capital initiatives in different countries. But at the end of the day, it's universal. If you talk about getting your money early, suppliers, companies, no matter where they are, sure. want money faster. Sure. Sure. So. Well, and, and when you talk about optimizing solutions, I'm going to think with that breadth and scope of clients, you know, a lot of people now are talking about big data and they talk about predictive analytics. You see a lot of best practices. Do you see a lot of the same situations and bringing a lot of the same solution, but learning from each one of those experiences? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that, um, you know, it's not, it's, it, you know, at the end of the day, getting it, it's around, you know, I have an invoice. I've sold something to my customer. I have an invoice that I'm going to send to my customer, and then I'm going to get paid at some future date. You know, from that perspective, it's very universal and common. Within the details of that, there's a lot of uniqueness for, you know, different verticals, industries, countries, and things like that. But for the most part, it's a very uh, standard process, for, you know, when you're dealing with, hey, I've got an invoice, it's due at some date, now I want to leverage it and get paid faster. Um, from that perspective, it's pretty similar. So the, probably the average first-generation entrepreneur works with sort of a myopic belief structure based on exactly what you're saying, and that is factoring. You know, the old school, I've got an invoice, and I want to try to leverage that invoice against getting some cash flow. How do you optimize that? How do you come up with a situation that, you know, tell us a little bit about how you decided to build a solution and how that solution actually works. Sure. I mean, you know, today, you know, we, you know, we have solutions that really are geared to um, optimizing companies' work capital. So uh, uh, we currently have two kind of generic solutions. One is, or two solutions. One is 
is where you take a large corporate who's dealing with their suppliers and wants to be able to extend their terms, um, maybe 30 to 45 days or 30 to 60 days, and they're worried about the, the, the negative impact for their suppliers around the cash flow implications of that. So on the one side, it's around how do I, uh, you know, offering a solution to that corporate to be able to allow that supplier to get paid much faster in a, what I'll call a confirmed model. And, um, and what's kind of the offshoot of that and what's kind of happened over the last several years is suppliers have said to us, look, this is great. Uh, I, I'm able to sell my receivables from this confirmed model, and uh, I like getting paid faster. What about all my customers I have that aren't offering this solution today? I still like to be able to get working capital. What, what can you offer me around that? And so what we're trying to bring to market as a, you know, bank agnostic solution where suppliers could, you know, go upload their invoices and work with all kinds of banks all around the world to be able to provide them, you know, cash for the receivables they have on our platform. Does it build out like an almost an enterprise resource software? I mean, I don't I understand the difference between the two concepts completely, but in a conceptual way, is it that deep? Do you not only deal with the clients themselves, but with their customers as well, or with their vendors as well? Yeah, but it's not, it's much simpler deployment than, than, than like an ERP system. I mean, ERP systems is a, is, a, is a much is a very big change, disruptive force inside an organization to bring best practice and things of that nature and a new way of doing business. This is very simple deployment in the aspect of we're really only dealing with once an invoice is is either approved or completed, once it's done, then we get involved around getting paid in that last mile. So we're not changing a lot of the invoice process flow or things of that nature. Uh, it's really just dealing with once an invoice has is, is been, you know, product's been shipped and the invoice has been created, how do I get paid faster on that? That's what our solutions are really geared to is run the last mile from invoice creation to payment. Analog to digital, the disruption that's happening in the banking industry in general from the traditional standpoint, fintech as everybody calls it, uh, is that making a difference in your business? Well, um, I, I, it's, help me understand what you're asking. You're asking. Is well, I, I guess the speed and the uh, and the different forms of payments. I mean, obviously, you've got everything from electronic payment to now they're playing around with virtual currency, Bitcoin, and that kind of stuff. Is is that getting too complicated? Is the solution? Yeah, I, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, or I think right now it's just really the focus is on. Hey, I have an invoice. It's due in X amount of days. I need cash flow. How do I accelerate my capital and get paid? And it, you're really dealing with, you know, definitely electronic payment in the sense that in the United States it's ACH, in Europe it may be CEPA, which is a new standard for moving money. Um, but for the for the companies that's not, they don't really need to get involved in that. That our technology and our services really take care of that with our funders to determine what's the appropriate way to get money from point A to point B. You know, things like Bitcoin and things like that are is still way in its infancy and not really something that we're even looking at at this point. And dollar valuation and currency eva- valuation when you're dealing with multiple countries and that kind of thing, obviously that's in the formula of the relationship with that particular deal with that particular client. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the things that Prime Revenue brings to the table as being a global multi-bank solution is that you may be a company today that deals with customers all over the world today, right? The world is flat. And you would be dealing with different companies in different parts of the world, different currencies. And sometimes a bank, and often a bank, will not just deal with one, you know, would deal with every currency, every jurisdiction around the world, but yet you have the need all around the world. So uh, we yeah. can bring in, you know, a bank that just wants to deal with your U.S. dollar, U.S. customers. You have a bank, I can bring a bank that deals with your European portfolio and a bank that brings in, works with your Asian portfolio. So for you, one technology, one solution for all your customers. Where it versus having to get on different technologies or different platforms or with different banks on separate solutions for all your needs around the world. Obviously, a strong selling proposition from a global perspective. Um, is that your target customer per se? And and do you have a target customer? And and help us from a, a listener standpoint to define who would want to use you and who may not want to use it. it would sound to me like you're such a an obvious choice that. Uh, the problem is uh, is volume, <laughs> and not yeah, we, necessarily anything else. That's exactly right. It's a very horizontal solution, right? I mean, getting paid faster, whether you're, you know, a company selling legal services or whether you're building cars. I mean, the ability to get fa- paid faster is is certainly universal. So, uh, you know, our fir- our focus is uh, there are certain industries where ca- they're more the terms are longer, cash is more constrained, and things of that nature, which maybe have more applicability. But for the for the our target customers are typically companies that are have a working capital initiative that are really focused on they could either be you know from a growth perspective that they're growing and they have limited access to capital 
um, for their growth. Um, it could be companies that are really cash constrained because of other, you know, issues in their business. They need to get yeah, access to capital. They want to leverage assets like receivables to get paid much faster. I would say, though, that one thing is that we're targeting right now is not the very small enterprises, not the, you know, typically companies that are, you know, probably anywhere from, I'd say, you know, $100 million in sales up to the Fortune 500, right? So it's, it's really not something, because of your point about volume, right? It really comes down to volume. Mm-hmm. And if you're the small SME right now, it's um, those, those the challenges with the amount of, the amount of volume you have to justify the time and energy and expense for these type of programs. There's certainly a lot of solutions out there, but right now we're focusing on more of the the mid sized small and medium enterprises up to the, the big companies. Now, and again, in an old economy, you would have, um, would, as you identified, find a need and then look for a solution. Got to get some money, figure out how to leverage what uh, assets I have available to me. Obviously, outstanding invoices might be one of those. That's kind of a reactive mode. Is most of the business reactive, or is it a case where you actually come on as a consulting situation and are proactive in terms of if you're in that uh, numbers range that you're talking about, should you make contact with Prime Revenue to talk about how to best handle the pre-invoicing process as far as time turnaround and methodologies, even agreements, uh, that kind of thing? Is that Would that be out of the box? Well, it's, it's a little bit, but I think what you're talking about being proactive is a, is a very good point. I think that, you know, oftentimes we will we'll talk to a company or, or hear a company talk about they're looking for working capital initiatives, they're looking for free cash flow, and they're not necessarily sure how to do it, right? What are the ways in which you can do that? I mean, look, there's not a lot of levers in, in working capital. You could pay your suppliers slower, you could get paid faster, or you could, or you could reduce inventory, right? I mean, those are really the big three in the working capital play. We really play on paying your suppliers slower and getting paid from your customers faster. And we really can go in there and provide a consultative approach around, hey, here's some, here's some strategies around what we're doing, why we're doing it, to help them, you know, lead them to maybe this is a good solution for them. So we're really not a, a technology platform that really helps them accelerate the approval of invoices, let's say, faster. But we are really working with companies on it, consulting with them, understanding their working capital needs, what are the levers that they're looking, they're trying to pull, and how can we help them, you know, pull those levers. Well, again, coming as an amateur to the subject, to such a subject matter expert as yourself, uh, I'm trying to think in terms of a competitive advantage. And one of the things in this day and age with, we said, fintech and the speed of, of the movement of money, I guess terms matter. And so when I was talking about proaction, is it a consideration that if you don't get yourself into a situation by presenting the proper terms to begin with, that you're better off than you are to be reactive once those terms have already been agreed to and now you find yourself in a cash flow situation? Well, that's, yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I think part of the challenge is that some companies just not, you know, terms are one of these things where whoever has leverage wins, right? So if you're a big company and you're going to dictate what terms are going to be to your company, then you've got to deal as a company with the ramifications of those terms. Mm-hmm. So if, you, you know, some companies also use it as a competitive advantage, right, where they want to, to differentiate themselves and may offer longer terms their, their, to, their, to their customers in order to, you know, differentiate themselves, especially in business where commodities or the products may be very similar. So what they could do is leverage, you know, terms as a competitive advantage. Well, but that puts you in a cash-constrained proposition because you may have bought the goods, paid your suppliers and everything since 30, 60 days ago, and now you're waiting 30, 60 days to get paid, you're in a very negative cash flow situation, hence why you should look at strategies around selling receivables and exposures in order to help with your cash flow situation to drive your business and move it forward while still leveraging, you know, either the play of the, the, the buyer told you that you're going to, you know, this is your term or whether you use it as a competitive advantage. Uh, this is, these are strategies to mitigate that risk. I'm guessing that there's no surprises. I mean, when you're talking about $100 million plus and going up, that both sides of the coin, be it the vendor or be it the, the uh, customer, they've both been there kind of thing. And where I'm headed as far as this last question, we're quickly running out of time, but I'm just really curious, is there a stigma? I mean, is there a case where it's not only doing it but how you do it to make sure that you don't damage the relationship in terms of future business? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly there's a, sometimes a stigma to selling receivables, and that's one of that consultative approach we talked about earlier around, you know, these are strategies you can deploy, and, they, and, and sometimes factoring, as you used earlier, has a negative impact. Selling your receivables is a negative impact, but I think, 
you know, when you go in and talk about this and talk about that it's, you know, counting treatment uh, positive, that there, there's certainly benefits from a, a metric point of view and a cash flow point of view, it's really powerful to a company. And so um, I think a lot of companies still are reluctant to, um, sometimes reluctant to look at these type of solutions because of the negative uh, uh, stigma to selling receivables. But well, there are a lot of good benefits to it. Well, it's sad because I would think that if you're in that particular mindset, you might not even explore what your options are in, in fear of, quote, unquote, being embarrassed. What about security in terms of first contact? I mean, when somebody gives you a call, you know, can, as a, I'm listening now as a, I'm a listener to our podcast, and I'm in this situation, but I, it's the first time I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. You're saying things I hadn't realized I could do. How do I get involved? How do I learn more? And and is that a situation where it's kind of you know quasi confidential, confidential in terms of first yeah, contact? absolutely. I mean, look, when we go and do the consultative approach of understanding, hey, what are your working capital objectives? What are you trying to accomplish? This is some tools that we could be able to roll out with you to help you achieve those. It's certainly all under confidentiality because we want to make sure that you're you understand the solutions, you're comfortable. So if anyone's interested, they certainly can contact Prime Revenue, and we can walk them through the different approaches for for achieving working capital benefit. And then it's all, and then work with them to determine what's the best approach. And it's, it's to your point, it's all confidential. Confidential. Just we're really going to work with them to understand their goals and objectives and how a solution like this may or may not work for them. Well, one thing for sure, which you don't know can hurt you. I mean, and obviously in an environment that has this much expertise and sophistication, experience, uh, proof of concept with the expansive number of customers and the type of countries and situations you find yourself in. By just that sheer description, you're going to be better at giving me advice and direction than I would stumbling around trying to figure it out for myself. So it sounds to me like the plan is to give you guys a call. Prime Revenues, the, the discussion of the day. Dan, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend a few minutes with us on Tech Talk. Well, thank you for having us on the program.